Hi, everyone. How are we doing today? Hey, All right, guys. Room. So just a bit of background. My name is Richard. Uh, I, I work for Mimecast. Um, I grew up in Australia, but moved to, to the Middle East uh, six months ago. Um, one of the key right now. Guys, um, who knows about Mimecast, or, or does anyone understand what Mimecast does? Fantastic. So uh, today, I'm going to go through a couple of different things, right? Uh, the first of which, I'm going to give you a, a high-level solution overview, right? This is not to, to really dwell down too much into the product. Uh, it's really for you to understand from a partner landscape how this can make you money every single year, every single time, right? Who likes to make money? Raise a hand, right? Fantastic. I, I never get anyone saying no to that answer, right? Now, um, yeah, this is, this is a way of making you money. It's also a way, a way of making me money, um, making Delphi money. At the end of the day, right, if, if we're not in the par partner ecosystem with our end goal for revenue, we're in the wrong business. Would you agree, right? We need to make revenue. That's, it's really important. But this solution overview will give you an understanding to help enable you, right? I give you a brief on understanding where you see the gaps in your customers to make more money. Are we good? Now, um, some of the shifts that have been happening in this market uh, and all around the world is a shift to Office 365. Now, any of you in the room have customers that are on Office 365? Fantastic, right? So um, it's predicted by 2020, 80% of all users around the world are going to be on Office 365 or a cloud mail platform like the likes of G Suite. Now, that's 2020 is not that far away. <laughs> it's, it's only around the corner. And so the shift to the cloud has happened from people traditionally on exchange servers, right? Um, uh, do people have customers on exchange servers as well? Yes, awesome, right? So the beauty of Mimecast is, is that we're mail platform agnostic. Whether you're on Office 365, on exchange, uh, G Suite, Lotus, Zimbra, whatever mail platform you're currently using or your customers are using, we can work with one, both, hybrid, whatever it is, right? Um, whether, they're uh, whether they're transitioning from Exchange to Office 365 or whatnot, we're able to cater for that change on any mail platform. Now, do you have an idea of how many emails um, are sent to businesses around the world every single day? Have a guess. Someone throw some answers out at me. One billion, OK. Any other answers? 100 million? Yeah? Fantastic, right? So believe it or not, just around businesses around the world, 112.5 billion emails are sent every day. Right? Let that, let that fa fact sink, sink in. Now, by next year, 128.8 emails billion emails are going to be sent every day. Why am, I sh why am I sharing this with you? We're in a growing business, ladies and gentlemen. We're not in a business that is going down, right? People are just going to send more and more business uh, emails every day, right? It's going to grow. Data is growing, right? So it's important to be in a business that's growing, right? Would you all agree, right? We don't want to get invested into the post office, let's say that, right? Because, because, frankly or not, people are not writing those beautiful letters that you used to write, going to the post office, having to stamp it, and send it across, have to wait a couple of days to receive it, right? People want instant connectivity all of the time. And that's why people use emails. Businesses use emails. Think about your day. Think about how many emails you send and receive, right? Uh, I, was, I was doing a calculation of, of how many emails I received yesterday. So I was on the plane, and I was, uh, I was going through how many emails I received yesterday. Uh, I, I received 123 emails yesterday, right? I sent 40 because I need to get back to a lot more, right? So we're, we're sending and receiving a lot. And so Mimecast is 100% cloud software as a service. We were born in the cloud in 2003 by two South African guys that started it in the UK, publicly listed, as Ankit said. Um, but the reason we started in the cloud, the, fi the fact that they had the vision to start it in the cloud in 2003, they knew that everyone is shifting towards the cloud, right? But, but as I mentioned before, right, 
whether you're on Exchange or, or on Office 365, we can still work. People think just because we're in the cloud, we can't work on on-prem. On so I just want to make sure I'm clear about that. And so we started on the cloud as an additional layer to, to provide cyber resilience. Um, has anyone heard the terminology of cyber resilience, or is this a, a new term that you're hearing today? You've heard about it before? Fantastic, right? So, so cyber resilience essentially um, talks to uh, being able to, uh, to be resilient on, on all factors, right? How do you prevent an attack happening? How do you recover from an attack that has happened? Or how do you provide redundancy or high availability for attacks whilst they happen, right? So it's important to cover all verticals. Um, and that's why Mimecast covers security, archiving, and continuity, because we need to make sure people are protected preventatively, and you have a proactive approach. People can stay always on, 100% of the time, and people can access their data anytime, anywhere in the world. Are you still with me? Great. Keep your hands down if you're still with me. All right, great. Guys, look at this participation, it's fantastic. Now guys, I'm moving on, right? So um, it's important, as I said, any, any device, any time. So you may, uh, your laptop, your mobile device, web portal, Mimecast is able to work, right? How do we work? So we take uh, the gate, we're at the gateway level, and we're at the, the gateway level, and so your MX records point to Mimecast. So I'm not gonna go super technical, but essentially, your MX records point to Mimecast. And that's delivered down through to your mail platform, and then down to your end users. As I mentioned, we focus on three core pillars, continuity, security, and archiving, right? I'm gonna start with uh, security. So we're able to intelligently route it. So not just to one platform, we can deliver simultaneously uh, emails to, to hybrid environments, right? Because we're mail platform agnostic. Um, we're able to provide DNS authentication, antivirus, anti-spam, right? As uh, Ankit mentioned before, right? Uh, antivirus and anti-spam doesn't cut it these days. Why? Because the cyber threat landscape has evolved. It's grown, it's, it's become more prevalent. The rise of Bitcoin actually allows hackers to get a payment out of it, right? If you think five, 10 years ago, right? If someone hacks you, how do they get their payment? Hi sir, can you please um, drop off the money at this, at this uh, house address? Yeah, it, it was a lot harder back in the day, right? So now, what, what happens? People say, hey, I'm gonna have your data, and if you don't pay me my Bitcoin, I'm gonna sell it to the highest bidder, or I'm going to destroy it. Or even worse, they'll go to your competitive business and say, hey, I've got, I've got, I've got data on Delphi, do you want their, their company confidential, right? That's what's happening, right? So what we do to protect uh, around the antivirus and anti-spam engines, we're the best of breed around it. Now, obviously I work at Mimecast, and obviously I'm gonna say I'm best of breed, but how do I prove it? 100% uh, antivirus through reputation and signature, you get a money back guarantee if any of your emails are compromised through reputation or signatures through your antivirus. We put a money, we put a, an SLA around that, right? Uh, Anti-spam, how do we back that up? We, we receive, at Mimecast, three billion emails a month, right? We do threat intelligence for all of that, and our anti-spam engine, right, has a 95% uh, anti-spam block rate. So what that means, there's, a, uh, th there's, there's still some coming through, and you're saying, hey, you're not that great. But our false positive rate is 0.0001%, right? So what might be spam to us might not be spam to you. And if it's spam to you, the next time, it'll definitely get blocked across the threat intelligence landscape. Make sense? I don't want to spend too much time on antivirus, anti-spam, because it's important to protect it, but it's evolved, as I mentioned. Now, we have a product called TTP. It stands for Targeted Threat Protection. Say it with me. Targeted Threat Protection. Targeted threat protection. Fantastic. Now, what this does, it focuses on, on some key aspects of the business, which has evolved, as I mentioned. The first of which is, is scams like phishing. Does anyone know what phishing is? Yeah? Okay, fantastic. Um, for those that don't know in the room, essentially, um, think of a fisherman, right, that casts a net and hopes he catches, uh, catches some fish, right? It's, just, it's a very easy terminology. So essentially what hackers do, they send out 
bulk emails, and hopefully someone bites back. How do they do this? They do this through URLs, right? Um, as you all know, right, especially maybe in your signatures, you send and receive emails that have URLs, right? And so the, the issue that we face with the URL climate is that when people click on that URL, what happens? They get redirected to a site, right? Now, if it's scanned and, and mentioned that it's safe on the way in, what is the security risk associated, associated with your customer's business? Anyone want to guess? OK, I'll help you out, guys. The security business risk is that it can be scanned, marked as safe, sits in your inbox, but tomorrow it gets hacked, or the day after, right? And so you're prone to risk. How many of you go back to your original email and use the link in your email to click on that link to take you to your website? Or do you guys take it and then retype it? I know, I, I just use the clicks in the email. It's a lot easier, right? Um, if someone's asking me to go to something. So what we do at Mimecast is we rewrite the link every click, every time, right? And, we, and, and, and they can't see where the source code of it is because it's redirected to Mimecast, right? We're also able to use user education. It's a key point, right? Now, a lot of you are sitting here today, and, and you might think, hey, Richard is a fantastic speaker, and he's delivering the message really well. But frankly or not, there's going to be some information that you forget, correct? Right? We can't retain all the information. And the most vulnerable people in any organization is myself, you, and your users, right? Because they can go through training, but if they're not educated constantly, there's a security risk associated with it. Now, in order to provide that, we need to make sure that we provide a key element, which is user education. So what we do is we, um, it's a policy-driven engine, and so we're able to actually test the users. We ask them, is this URL safe? If they click it's safe and it is safe, then we let them through. If they click it's safe and it's not safe, we block it. But then we give the IT administrator access to a report every day, every week, however much they want it, to view this and test them a lot more granularly. Make sense so far? Does it make sense so far? Fantastic. Now, attachment protection is another key element of this. Now, attachments are vital. Why? Because all your main corporate data is in attachments. Your invoices, all of these things. If I sent, uh, um, Jacob, if I sent you uh, uh, an attachment and I said, hey, I want to give you a pay rise, right? Would you click on it? It depends. I mean, I'd, I'd be the first to click on it, right? Right, it, 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 does, do, it does depend, but you know, when you see, a, a, a see an email from your boss with an attachment say, <laughs> I've got a pay rise for you, right? You know, this, this is what hackers are using, right? They, 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 they use these sort of techniques. So attachments is prone to, to, to vulnerability, right? Because it's got your sensitive data. Now, the other issue with attachments is that it's late, the latency, right? It takes time to download, right? Uh, for those uh, who have customers on Office 365, you will more than, know more than anything um, that, that Microsoft has probably a, a half an hour uh, bandwidth time on their attachments. And after half an hour, whether it's malicious or not, it's still sent through to the end user, right? So Mimecast mitigates that risk by providing 25 seconds to up to four minutes, getting your attachments, right, if they want the original attachments. But what we do is we do a pre uh, pre-screening of that, and we provide a zero delay, zero threat, zero ransomware down to the end user, so they can access that attachment instantly, right? We also give people the options. They can do both. They can do one or the other. It's very granular because it's a cloud platform so software as a service. How am I doing for time? Great, man. Good? Better, We're good. Than, better than me. Fantastic. <laughs> um, now, the, the, the third most uh, uh, critical market leading research around this whole whole concept is impersonation. The targeted threat protection um, is, is to do with impersonation. Um, so, does anyone know what impersonation is? Yeah. So, what was your name? Vishen. Awesome. What what what's impersonation?
Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, if I took your business card and I went to someone in this room that doesn't know who you are, right? And I say, I'm, I'm you. Will they believe me? Absolutely, right? Why wouldn't they? Right? I'm giving them a business card. That's kind of all they need to go by. Um, maybe they've got a, a name tag or whatnot. And they're impersonating the, the individual. Now, hackers have found this to be the easiest way to make more money. Right? Why? Because once they do the phishing, once they do the attachments, all of these things, impersonation, where are your details? It's on Facebook, it's on LinkedIn, it's on Google, it's everywhere, right? If you're on holiday, what are you doing? You're posting a photo of yourself on holiday. So what, they know that you're not at work. Like, all these things are, are widely available. So someone is trying to impersonate you. But the issue with impersonation is that no one can 100% protect against it. Why? Because it's a genuine email, right? It's a genuine email and there's a genuine person, um, maybe not so genuine, but there's a person or, or a source code behind that sending out that email. Now in order to protect impersonation, Mimecast has come up with five key indicators to, to detect that impersonation, um, uh, to protect from impersonation attacks. The first of which is we look at the domain similarity. Now, um, can someone give me the, the domain name of the, the email? Anyone? Fantastic. VRS? Consultancy.india. OK. Um, so if I was to take, right, out of the consulting, if I was to take the L from your, your company name and change it to a capital I, would you be able to tell the difference? No, right? Would anyone be able to tell the difference? Right? I was doing a presentation to a group of 100 people two weeks ago, right? And we, we changed our Mimecaster's domain from the M to an R and an N, right? We had it on the big, big screen, bigger than this. And we said, can anyone see the difference? No one could see it. We zoomed in. There were a couple of people that see it. Now think about how many times you look at your email on your phone, on your laptop, and, and you don't even, even recognize this. So it's so easy for people to, to change a character difference without you even knowing, right? So we, we look at the character difference, and you can set the policy one, two, three, whatever characters you want. We also look at the display name. Is there an ankit that's not from Delphi, but is pretending to send it from Delphi? So we look at that. We look at the domain history, because if there's any history of it, we need to make sure. Is it blacklisted? Is it all, all these different things? So because we look most, at that. Most likely hackers register the domain like one day before, and they try to set it so Absolutely. that it doesn't come in the blacklist. Absolutely. The yeah. yeah, so when, when they're trying to do these type of attacks, you know, it's, they've got, they, they might be researching for a while, but the attacks, they create those domains within less than a week of attacking. Because once it gets blacklisted, that email, they can't use it anymore. Um, we also look at the reply to mismatch. So if it's been sent from Ankit, but it's going to hacker.com, that's, that's an important thing to look for. Um, and we also look um, for keywords. Is there anything that's saying bank, transfer, payment, wire, um, all these different things. But also, that's customizable. You can, you can look at your customer's environment and say, hey, have they been hit by impersonation, or what's, what's going on with that? This is a way to make more money for you guys, right? Because people are getting impersonated every day. I'm sure you've seen it. I'm not going to get a raise of hands, but I'm sure you've seen it in, in, in this market especially, right? Yes. We've done some research around it, and we've seen it tremendously grow. Um, in the UAE, the FBI came and did a presentation to us, and, and these attacks have grown uh, by 1,008% in the last year alone. Have you heard this from your customers? I'm sure quite like, I think every customer. Yeah, yeah, is, is there anyone else in the room that shares, shares, shares the same pain, right? Yeah, um, and, and so this, the reason why I'm sharing all of this, this is just extra way of making you money, right? Um, the, there's, a, uh, the, there's an interesting uh, thing with the, the impersonation attack. There's, there's this company uh, of hackers, uh, you might know, know of them, um, it's a sub-branch of Anonymous. Right? You guys probably know Anonymous. And they hacked this news agency um, uh, in, in the US. 
So they hacked this U United States news agency and uh, their Twitter account. And do you know what they posted on their Twitter account? They posted that the White House has been attacked, right? Yes. Now, uh, I don't actually have that, that screen here, but I can show you it. I've got another presentation. Now, when that was released, right, you, you should see it, right? It, this is the US dollar market. It dropped like this when, when that was released. Now, that's fake news, right? And that's someone just posting something on someone's news account. But the, the effects of it is a financial loss, right? And so if you, you as partners can go to your customers and mitigate that risk, right? Yes, you charge them a service and you charge them a fee, but you know what? You're saving them millions, thousands of dollars, right? This happened to Maersk, one of the largest shipping companies in the world. They had contracts like Ikea, Walmart, right? They lost it overnight. Why? Because their email was offline for two weeks. With their emails being offline for two weeks, why? All their records were on email, right? Now, they lost $400 million worth of contracts. Uh, no, not contracts, $400 million worth of revenue in those two weeks, but they lost 70% of all their customers. Right? So it's not just the loss you have today. It's the ongoing and reputational loss that you have to recover from tomorrow. Right? That makes sense. Another key fact is our internal email protect. We're able to do what we do with URL and attachments, uh, what we do for, for people outside the organization. We're able to do it internally as well. Why? Because if someone end up getting compromised somewhere through like a USB or something, what do they do? They get this video or link. What do they do? They send it to their friend. You know? That, that, it happens, right? Maybe and in Australia. That's <laughs> true. No, it, it, it happens more so in Australia. But, but I guarantee you it, uh, it, it does happen here in India as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I've done some research about it. Uh, not a lot of people are open to admit it, yeah. but it does happen, right? Um, because they want, to, they want to make sure that they are not exposed from a public uh, perspe uh, perspe uh, perspective. Um, are we all good so far, right? Security is my, my biggest uh, front. Why? Because it's an ever-changing market we need to protect, right? It's constant, constantly changing every day. We need to make sure we protect users that are leaving the organization. So data leak prevention is another thing that we offer, right, for our customers, for our partners to sell to our customers to make more money. They can buy it separately or buy it as standard part of our security package, right? We use a new technology that's called fuzzy hashing, so it's actually, and fingerprinting, um, that, that actually is able to scan and do predictive threat analysis around the data leak prevention policies that you put in place. So it's, it's next gen technology around that. Also disclaimers, signature management. You guys, you guys use this? Your customers use this? Right, absolutely, right? So this is inclu included part of our, our standard security package. Um, so you can, uh, I actually, when I go to customers and talk about uh, the, the, the signature part of it, I actually say it's not an IT function, it's a marketing function. Why? Because if, your part, if you as partners here send a list out to your customers and you've got Mimecast, you can track that data. If someone clicks on it, you can see who's clicked on it, when they clicked on it, and track it. It's really a marketing function. It's a great tool. So that's security so far. Any questions so far? We're all on track. Awesome, right? Now, if your Exchange server, your Office 365 server, your mail platform goes down, what happens? Tell me, guys, what happens? Your customers, I'm sure, I'm sure they've experienced this. Because you know why? They're calling you. True? Right? Well, what happens? Productivity goes down. Business goes down. There's a financial cost. There's more money for you to be made because you can add your services on. Right? But what, what happens? It's, it's, there's, there's a risk there. And now, in order to make sure we mitigate this business risk, what do we do? What's the percentage that we have to guarantee our customers to make sure that their business stays always on via email? What's the percentage? Absolutely, right? So if anyone offers below 100%, they can't guarantee the uptime of their customers. Mimecast, we're able to connect instantly. It's a policy-driven engine, and we're able to provide 100% connectivity 
right? Because remember, your MX records are pointed in Mimecast, so your mail platform goes down, your exchange goes down, you're constantly connected. Instantly receive, send and receive emails. We actually, um, we actually migrated one of our customers, uh, our largest customer globally in the UAE just this last year, um, Emirates Airlines, right? Um, now they've got 75,000 users, right? And when we migrated them over, not one email was lost. They were migrating from Exchange to Office 365. Not one email was lost. They went from over 40, over 40 email-related inquiries a day to 29 in six months. And those were because people didn't know how to use it properly, right? Um, now, that's, that's a crazy fact, right? I'm sharing this with you um, because it's important for you to understand that if you can provide 100% availability to your customers, your customers, I guarantee you, will pay you more, right? Because you're ensuring that they can stay operational, always on. High re redundancy is important, especially for emails. If I, if, I'm, if I can't access my emails and I'm in a meeting, who looks like the fool? The person I'm with or me? Me and my company, right? So I feel like I'm answering a lot of the questions for you. So, so we're going to go into to, to, to the next part. That's very simple. Any questions around that? Keep your hands down if there's, there's no questions. Okay, great, great. Um, now, archiving, right? What's the issue with archiving? Storage, Storage absolutely, right? Uh, any, other, any other concerns around archiving? Time frame. What's the typical time frame you wait for an email? Absolutely, right? So take a standard email, right, from two years ago. How long will that take? Ten minutes, right? Absolutely. Now, if I was to look ten years ago and it was a slightly bigger file, maybe half an hour, one hour, right? Um, and if you search, it incorrectly, if you search the wrong name, you know how long it'll take? A brand new search, right? So, guys, these are some, some concerns. It's not what I'm saying, it's what, what you've experienced, right? Like, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I want to make sure you guys are experiencing the same pain. And we're able to provide um, an opportunity for you to take this and, and, and onboard it and sell it to your customers, right? Now, archiving needs massive scale. We've got data centers across the globe, right? Currently none in India, so we tie into the UK grid, right? Um, and, and, and there's no, no issues from a governance or compliance. We're in the leaders uh, a quadrant for, for Gartner, for enterprise information archiving. Three years in a row, highest right ability to execute and completeness of vision, right? And, and not only that, guys, we have the highest ISO certifications. So there cannot be any breach, confidentiality, uh, risk mitigation, compliance, because we have to provide ISO certification compliance with any regulatory country, um, any regulatory laws of each country, right? So we've got, got all those certifications. If you need more details, I can actually provide you the exact ISO certifications with that. So compliance, uh, to make sure that you're encrypted, right? We provide two, six, yes, sir. So, so ISO so is, is a certification that's worldwide, right? That, that, that looks at the, the credibility of, of being compliant with that certification. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, we, we don't make that. I want to be clear, right? Mimecast doesn't, it's, it's an independent, uh, we don't pay someone to do it. We, we, we do it independently. It's not, uh, it's not, we go do the check and say, hey, are we compliant, right? It's an independent body that, that has a set of criteria to make sure we're, um, so take for example, 
right? We've got here um, these three boxes. It's triple kit. So what that means, we, we don't just store the header or the body, we store the metadata as well, right? So if you are compromised, right? right? Take for example, right? You're compromised, uh, one of our data centers is compromised in the world, right? Someone has gone in with security, uh, with guns, and, and has compromised the data, which uh, it, you know, it is, is a very far risk, but uh, uh, say that does get hap happen. They can't ever access a single email. Why? Because it's segmented across all our data centers in three different formats, header, body, and uh, metadata. So that's, that's one of like our compliance. So uh, these are different things. So different floodplains, different electricity grids, right, is another compliance, right? Um, ensuring that we have both physical and virtual data centers for recovery purposes on that different grid, right? A key thing that I actually forgot to mention when I started is that Mimecast was born in the cloud that started on something called grid computing, right? Now, many of you in the room might, might go, hey, what's grid computing? The easiest way to explain it is Google. Everyone know Google? Google's back end is grid computing, right? We use a very virtually similar uh, back, back end which we're able to provide. And, and when I explain a couple of things, you'll understand why we can provide the things that we can provide, right? Does that answer your question, sir? Yeah? Somewhat. Let's, we can take that uh, further discussion over lunch as well. Um, now, uh, it's important to be able to, to provide uh, that type of compute, right? Because like you said, uh, um, the gentleman here, I think, what was your name, sir? Burr. Burr, right, so did I say it right? Okay, fantastic. Data is growing, right? Uh, and so we need to be able to provide, provide people with ability, right, to recover their data, right? Um, archiving is one of those things for remediation. Now, someone uh, said earlier, right, it can take an hour, it can take half an hour, 10 minutes to recover an email, right? Now, Mimecast, because we have that back end like, like Google, right, grid computing, you know, their, their searches are instantaneous, right, when you search on Google, right? Our, our SLA, it's a money back SLA as well, right? Anyone wanna guess how long you can receive any email through your archive folder or your search box? Anyone wanna take a wild guess? Have a wild guess. 20 years. That's a long time. <laughs> okay. Okay. So. Okay. So. So our search SLA. So you can recover any email, whether it's from one week ago, one year ago, ten years ago, hundred years ago, if they do import it into Mimecast, right? Within seven seconds. Okay. It's a money back guarantee. Right? I can show you on my phone actually later. Right? I've got it on my phone, on your laptop, any of these devices, web portal, right? So no longer having to log a case with support, log a case with IT, it gives power to the end user to be able to retrieve any email they want. They get a search wrong, it's fine. Change your search, look at a new one. It's actually faster than seven seconds, but that's our SLA around it. Now our retention period is 99 years as default. You can set what the retention you want. You can do 10, five, whatever you want. As a default, it's 99 years. And we don't charge per gigabyte, per terabyte. It's bottomless. To you, sir, Baruch, that's it, right? Baruch, I, I need to work on that. I'm sorry, sir, right? Uh, can, can store 100 gigs. But Jacob, on, on the other hand, you can do 200 gigs. Same price, fixed price forever, right? Now, does that sound exciting to you? The beauty of it as a partner, right? I've never shared this, any customers in the room? Good, right, so as a partner, you can build this out into a service plan. You can say, first year, I'll give you 100 gigs for free, right? They're paying for the same thing. But next year, I'll give you 200 gigs, right? And the year after that, I'll give you 300 gigs, right? Because people want to feel like they're getting more, right? They pay the same thing, but they wanna get more. You can build services around it, so you can make more money, right? Because at the end of the day, right, you need to make more money, right? Um, and so that's, that's critical, that's critical. Now, the fifth largest Indian firm in India, I just said Indian firm in India, all right, anyway, um, yeah, uh, they're, on, they're on Mimecast, right? Uh, uh, 94 out of the top 
100 UK law firms use Mimecast for archiving specifically. Why? If you look at this, just this, right? But then you just look at this, right? Think about all the, the case search history, right? Um, think about banks, right? People work in the BSFI sector, right? <laughs> think about banks, right? And think about the amount of emails they're sending and receiving each day. Think about if they need to come up with an account name or a, a, how long that will take them. It's important to, 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 to get that under their belt. Now guys, does this make sense? Is this making sense to you? Does this give you an understanding on how you can make some more money? Yeah? So it's, we also can send and receive files up to two gigs, right? So if I send Ankit a file uh, of two gigs, right? He can send me a file back of two gigs as well because I've got large file sent. I can send that message securely as well, right? Through secure messaging. I can make sure he doesn't print, reply, forward. I can expire the email, whatever he wants, especially for your C-level executives. It's quite important, right? So that's something that we can do. But the beauty of this, ladies and gentlemen, it's all done through one single console. How many of you have customers that are using archiving with this person? Security with this person, availability with this person, right? It's all messy and you're paying more, right? Let's consolidate that into one single solution, right? Make sense, are you with me? Fantastic, guys.